comes to uh, doing a study, gathering data, and um, it's kind of what we're here talking about. Um, so, it, it, the history, the historical, how did Sneakhead get in the Potomac? We will, unless somebody makes a deathbed confession, we'll never know how unequivocally they got in the Potomac River. We have a pretty good guess. Somebody probably stocked them because they wanted to eat them. They wanted to establish a self-sustaining population. Um, they, the, the ones in Crofton in 2002 in Maryland, well, we know that was a result of fish that were bought for um, medicinal purposes by an Asian. Okay. And, and they weren't needed, so he didn't want to kill them, and he released them in that pond, and they had a male and a female, and they resulted in a, a, a viable population, which they were eradicated by Maryland DNR. Similar thing happened in Wheaton a year later. They were eradicated by Maryland DNR. The population that we now have that we found in 2004 in the tidal open system, Potomac River, genetically distinct from what completely we had. Different. Completely different. Not related. So Maryland DNR was successful in eradicating the early two populations in basically stormwater ponds. And, and now the, our best guess is based on the epicenter of distribution that we got, they only had 20 fish in 2004 captured. Based on that distribution, it's very likely they were introduced in the Dogue Creek watershed, which is uh, Fort Belvoir. There's a very transient community there with the military and also off of the Route 1 corridor, there's a lot of Asian markets and restaurants. And so I think it's, it's very likely that the fish were introduced there to create a self-sustaining population, probably around 2000. So we're looking at 15 years plus that that fish has been in this open system. They're, they're an unbelievably tasty fish. Uh, in my mm. humble opinion, yeah. they uh, blow rockfish or striper, uh, striped bass out of the water. The best eating freshwater fish bar none. But when we were on your boat, um, shocking, Brent, mm -hmm. um, I guess, uh, who's Brent? Um, I don't want to call him assistant. He's, He's technician. He's better than that. Technician. technician. Thank you. Um, he was educating us about, uh, in the Asian culture, a ritual. Yes. You know, you just don't go kill fish. I mean, there's an actual a ritual that you release them, and it's on most of the point where it's religious. Well, they, they, that... there's there's prayer release, uh, which is liberating an animal that was going to be killed. You know, it brings some value mm -hmm. to the person releasing the fish. And then there's the medicinal aspect of eating the fish. So we have two completely different sides of the coin there, both viewed as a positive depending on your perspective. I got you. But so basically, it was, they, they were brought in there for one of those, either to eat somewhere in there. Or, hmm. or in between, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. So, all right. We're, um, with your study, do you have any idea of the...